Well, welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to have a little brief look over On One's new updated software, On One Ten. So in our last video, we were discussing uh, presets within Lightroom and how we can use them as a starting point um, in our workflow and uh, developing our images. And I got chatting to the guys over at uh, Contrastly and we were discussing uh, the new On One uh, 10 software, uh, which is something I've heard about. I've heard lots of good things about it, but not something I've ever really used. It doesn't really fit into, as I see my workflow, a lot of my work is composite work, a lot of my commercial work that is, and um, I spend 95% of my time within Photoshop, which I think I've probably mentioned before. Um, Lightroom I use as well for cataloging and, and obviously for developing images, and if I need to batch process a lot of images for any other work, then obviously that's where Lightroom uh, comes into its own. So uh, I thought, well, I'll download the on one software and give it a try and um, see what it's all about, and um, actually what I've found is it's actually a very, very powerful bit of software and I can actually can see uh, instances where this would save me a lot of time um, in uh, with processing certain images. So I thought I'd take you through what I found today. It's a big program, there's lots of stuff to it, um, but uh, this is just my take on a small part of it. So you can obviously download a demo of On One, and to my surprise, and I've not ever heard of this before, um, is you can actually download not a 30-day demo, but actually a 60-day demo. So that gives you plenty of time to have a play around with it and get yourself comfortable with it. Um, and there's obviously a lot of tutorials out there which will go into much more detail than I'm going to go into today. This is kind of just my view. Like I said, I've never used this software before. This is just my view, and a few things that I found with it which was, was surprising, and it's actually now something that I would seriously consider uh, as a, a serious part of my workflow just because it's much quicker than doing a similar thing within uh, maybe Photoshop or even Lightroom to some respects so um, that's, where, that's where we are anyway so this is an image I've pulled out of my archives it's shot in Venice um, I think it's about 2004 I'd just gone digital I had a 1DS Mark II and uh, I'd walk around Venice virtually at, you know in, at pitch black not quite but it's dusk and I was just playing around with the camera so it's not a perfect uh, image but it was just really to test out what the camera could do and I actually quite like this image so I thought I'd use this one um, as a bit of a test in this software so I'm going to go to the develop module I have adjusted this slightly just had a bit of a crop to it but nothing nothing major I've left it pretty much in a, a reasonable state just as a starting point we're now going to go to uh, file go to plugin extras and here you'll see once you've in, um, um, installed on one it's available through Lightroom I believe it's also available through Photoshop although I've not uh, not actually used it from there yet and you've got all these different uh, plugins the on one plugins you've got layers portrait effects enhance etc I'm not going to go into all of these I think some of them are self-explanatory but if you want to dig deeper you can have a look at those however I will say that the portrait one although I've not really used it yet if it's as good of, as the other stuff I found out out today then it'll be worth exploring because you know doing portrait to retouch him can take you know a little bit of effort um, and uh, this plugin looks like it will do a pretty good job what I've seen of it so far so that's worth exploring but I can't uh, I can't comment any further than that because I haven't actually used it I'm going to go into the um, effects panel, so I'm going to click on effects and this image is going to get basically exported into on one as a PSD file and as if by magic it's now opened in on 110 in the effects uh, panel uh, plugin sorry and uh, you can see here it's a 16-bit uh, Photoshop file so it's going to basically um, add the effects as a layer to the file which means you can go back in and obviously edit it uh, in Photoshop if you feel the need so uh, where do we go from here well I'll tell you where I went I just wanted to have a little play around which is what I probably encourage you to do um, with some of the presets in here so these presets really are, uh, are just like presets within Lightroom there are a bunch of effects or filters um, um, stacked with each other so maybe you might have a vignette and um, some sharpening etc and it's all layered and the good thing about this software is that as you if you want to use a, a preset uh, let's just click on one let's click on the film preset you will see 
over on this side in a second once it's updated um, it gives you the op opportunity then to go into each of those uh, individual filters within the preset and adjust each one so this is where it starts to get interesting um, is that you obviously can go in and readjust these uh, for yourself and uh, save them as your own preset just like you can in Lightroom and uh, so let's go back a step let's find uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's one of these film ones I decided to pull out a bit earlier and it's down here somewhere you can scroll through these and it's great because you can obviously get a, a quite a nice preview you can you can make these a little bit bigger as well uh, these previews to look at so the type 55 this is like a, a like a 5-4 Polaroid type effect and uh, normally probably you know again it's not wouldn't be part of my commercial work but you know for a bit of fun um, I think it could really suit this image so this is my starting point and you can see now the borders tab has popped up and also you can go in and edit the opacity of the border uh, you can even change the type of border so you've got all these different film presets in here so you can have a camera a border emulsion border etc I'm gonna stick to the um, where was I I think it was a film one and I think I had the type 55 somewhere type 52 there so that's where we're at that's what I want um, so just to recap that so you can ch choose a category of film and then within that category there's obviously different types of um, variations of uh, film borders and that often applies to a lot of these presets that I've seen so far so um, let me just have a look at the I think I might have wanted this one yeah this is the one I, I, I chose earlier um, that I'll play around with so from here you can also change the blending mode of these borders uh, to lighten just keep like you can in in uh, Photoshop darken screen etc so there's quite a few uh, other settings within there um, I'm gonna leave that on normal you can change the opacity so maybe you don't want the effect as strong as that so you can just move it around to your taste there. Um, if there's colour in the image, you can change the hue and the saturation of that border. You also change the brightness. So again, if you don't want it too bright, you can obviously lighten or darken it from there. Um, you can also invert it. So if you don't like it uh, too strong there, you can try and have a little play around with the invert button. And that just obviously does what it says. It inverts the, uh, the effect. Thickness, again, you can just move the preset, um, the border around there, or actually move the image. So leave that as it is. So uh, you can also rotate it as well and flip it and stuff like that. So again, it's one of those things, it's just one of those fun things just to go in and have a play around with. And it's not to everybody's taste, as I said. Um, so you want to flip it vertically. So there's a lot of options within there other option that I really like is that you can actually go in and add um, either a mask onto the actual filter that you're trying to adjust or you can add up top here if I close that down is like the overall setting so this is kind of a master um, a master setting so if you want to drop back the effect of all of the preset you can do it here okay like so or you can go individually like we just did we also can add a mask to the overall image and as you, when you add a mask either here on the overall settings or within the borders or black and white down below you'll see you can actually add a, add a, add a border to the individual filter as well so if I add one uh, to the overall setting um, we could it automatically um, selects a brush for you and the brush uh, settings at the top here and again just like in Photoshop you can set your opacity and your feather and etc and let's say you didn't, didn't like the effect at the top here you can just brush that away on the mask like so so great again it's it's just uh, it's lovely and versatile which is what I really like I, I don't like to be tied into anything um, as often as the case as you work through an image sometimes you need to go back a few steps to adjust something and this gives you the option which I really love so uh, that's uh, that's that we can also uh, 
let me just try and close this down a minute. The, the only slight thing, um, problem I've had uh, with this, and I don't know if it's a software, if it's uh, something to do with my system, or what have you, is I found some of these these actual filters in the stack, in the layer stack, a bit hard to select at times. Um, so, but that again, that might not be the software, that might just be me. You then can also add, add a filter. So if you click on this box here you can actually come in and add another effect so let's say you know this is like a, a like a 5-4 Polaroid look so maybe um, you could maybe uh, had a bit of blur lens blur some older lens on 5-4 cameras weren't very sharp at the at the edges so we could click on lens blur and maybe add um, a lens blur effect so click in here there we go there we go and you've got like tilt shift and uh, different presets here sides so that will that'll soften the sides I want something a bit more subtle I'm going to go to round and I'm just going to blur the edges so I can I can alter the transition of this just like you can in Lightroom if you use the filters there uh, I can drop down the opacity a little bit um, the amount of the blur optical quality not sure exactly how that works but um, you can do that and there's a few other bits and pieces um, and you even can change the uh, the the, sh the type of blurring and the way it would react um, with uh, with the aperture which is uh, again very clever so this is quite a advanced bit of software um, especially for the price uh, that's what surprised me and I just love the fact that you can make all these uh, all these adjustments in it so uh, also you can have a bit of film grain which again you know if you blur an image you normally want to put a bit of grain in so you can do that here if you wanted to so once you do that I can close that off now I might then at this point think well the lens blur really I might want under my border so maybe I need to move my border up to the top if it will go and I think that would be a better better point once you finish, you can actually um, you can actually save your own preset, so you can name this something and apply it as a starting point uh, if to other images, which is again is great. And once we're ready, we can just click down here on apply, and that will open up. I'll save the image back in the same folder where it came from as a PSD file. Now. Word, word of warning, if this is a mistake I made, and this is what I think, I need to look into this, but this is what I think happens. If you want to have the ability to export this image as a PSD file with the original data on one layer and then the data that you've created within the effects panel here on another layer, then there's a setting for that, I believe. If you go into Preferences, uh, go to Plugins, in smart photos, if you um, you can a you can actually get this to um, ask you on each image, but if you want to uh, be able to open these images up back into on one and re-edit them, uh, re-edit all these settings like they are set up now in here, you need to save the photo, the Photoshop file as a smart photo re-editable. If you want to open this up as a PSD file within Photoshop and have all that information on one layer, you need to select the normal maximum compatibility section. Um, I'm going to click on that. Now, when we apply this now and it opens up in Lightroom, we should then be able to open it up in Photoshop and add that data on a separate layer. Let me show you. So I'm back in Lightroom. Here's our image. I'm going to right-click, edit in... Photoshop, I'm going to click Edit Original, and that should now open up, there we go, Profile Warning, ignore that, open up in Photoshop, and there we have our layer with all our adjustments done in on one effects, and also our original layer. As I said, if you prefer, um, and let's just test this, because I'm still trying to work this out myself, um, let's go to our image again, let's go to Edit in um, on one effects and we'll open that file up um, edit original I think it's gonna open up get rid of that oops think it will open up uh, but it won't have the ability for us to edit those layers and no it hasn't so there you go so if again let me just go over this if it appears uh, if you want to be able to open up your image in on one and readjust it at a later date you 
probably need to select the smart photo re-editable if however you want to export it and open it up in Photoshop and maybe adjust the layers there for any reason you need to uh, select the normal maximum compatibility option on there so just have a just bear that in mind or just get the software said so if you go into the preferences if you just get the software to ask you each time uh, if not and make the decision there if you know you're going to go to photoshop and do more work you may want to do it there it may be um, the fact that you may want to go back just into on one and make adjustments and that might be a safer a safer thing to do it all depends on your workflow so Bit of a, a bit of a whirlwind um, tour of On One's uh, Photo 10 effects in the effects panel, but I hope it's sort of opened your eyes. It's certainly opened my eyes a little bit of what's uh, what's available in here. And as I said, the draw for me is it's so flexible and editable uh, to use. And there's a whole lot more uh, um, presets and stuff. You can also download presets, I believe, from the website and the extra ones. And of course, you know, really have only just scratched the surface of this. There's all these other modules that come with the full package of the software. There's the enhance and there's the portrait section, which I'm interested in looking at. I think that could be a huge time saver in certain situations. So I'm going to have a play around with that and uh, various other things. So go down, download a copy. It's free. It's for 60 days and you can have a really good uh, experiment with it and have a bit of fun. And uh, maybe we'll even do another video on it. Who knows? Until the next time, thanks for watching.